My name is Famotoy Nguyen Proto. I come from the capital of Samoa, which is Cannons Creek in Porirua. I'm also a member of the, uh, of the Hosanna Fellowship under the stewardship and honorable leadership of my pastor, Gary Colville. And it's a pleasure to be here this morning to share with you men. Men above all men, because you're saved in Jesus. So what I want to share with you is basically some little things that have happened in my life and that have taken me to a space where I'm now uh, really being used of God and available to be used by God. Uh, many years ago, or a few years ago, I came here and I sat where you are and I watched certain speakers like Nick and various other people. And I said to God, God showed me that I was going to speak here one day. And so the gist of my testimony is faith that God will actually do things. When say, God says he's going to do something, it'll happen and it'll happen in his timing. As forever, or forever you're faithful to him, forever he will be faithful to you. So at 16 years of age, when I was a young fellow at 16, I was in a youth gang, I ended up in prison, did all those things that young people did because I was on Ponsonby Road and I assaulted a cop, went to a youth prison to check it out. Uh, when I left, <laughs> that was in 1980. In 1987, I walked out of the, uh, the more established prisons and I walked out as a fully patched member for an established gang and just finished doing time for assault with intent to injure. And my life was just a mess and I needed to leave that life behind. I knew I needed to leave that life behind and I wanted to, to, to sort of do something different. You know, in gang life, you, you get a whole lot of privileges. You get like uh, alcohol, drugs, a whole raft of things that, 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 that are given to you. And one of those things are like women. So I treated women like buses. There'd be another one along in a minute. And so what happened was, eventually, I had different children to two different women, apart from the wife that I now had, who I've been happily married to and been together with for 23 years, and we now have four children. And, um, but my whole life has been, you see, my testimony is not about gang life. My testimony is about restructuring and repairing my family. Because I had so many children. I've got seven children. I've got five dishwashers and two channel changers. And so what happens is that you've got to look after your children. And I've been trying to do that. And I've, I've been trying to restructure and bring them together to know God. And they're coming to the space now where they're starting to, to really explore. And it's taken years. But what God has shown me is that you've got to stand. Men, you've got to stand. You've got to make a stand where you can say, okay, my family is this way. But now I need to show them a different way. They can do whatever they want. They can make whatever mistakes that they're going to make. But if I'm standing in God, they always have a point of reference to that they can go back to and say, Dad showed me the way if for 23 years they stayed there. You know, praise God. That's what we're here. That's what this is all about. I, I, one of the things that I'm really passionate about is young people. So when I left gang life, I went into community and did community work and worked with youth gangs. So in Porirua in 2006, 2007, we had 25 established youth gangs in our city. And what we did was we tried to send a different message. So instead of Bloods and Crips, we sent the message, Brothers Not Colors. And we started to engage with people. And we started to bring these people to church. And years later now, I start seeing them come to Cannons Creek, to Hosanna, bringing their kids to church. Why? Because we led. We stayed in that same space. And we didn't move from it. We said, we're going to be people of God. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to stay there. And these people are going to come to know him through faith because we believe that they would come. I love being Christian. It's been a hard life. It's not been an easy life, but it's been a challenging one. And some of the times that I've been working with youth gangs, I've been invited to government things. I went to Promise Keepers one year, and then the following Monday, I wore a Promise Keepers T-shirt to dinner with John Key and uh, all his ministers. None of them said anything with this big Promise Keeper label on my T-shirt. No one said anything. But later on that year, they invited me back to have a barbecue with Prince William, which was good. And, uh, you know, it was quite good. So you get to speak to those people. But when I look at that, I think to myself, where I've come from and where I am now can only be done by God. Eh? Some of our people, when they walk, they walk this way, then they look at their history. My people, Pacific culture, we don't walk like that. We walk like this. We're always looking back. And then we look front. Because that's the way we're, we're inclined, you know? And so the same thing for me in my Christian walk with Jesus. I'm always looking at my walk, at where God is. I'm always looking at God and what he's done 
before I look at where I'm going in life. And it's been a very successful formula for me. I know my time is nearly up because it's very, very short, but I just wanted to say that when I've been in those spaces, it's been very, you know, I, I've been, to be honest, I've been in some spaces with some people, different kinds of people with leadership and some world leaders and stuff like that that I never thought I'd ever be in. And I was totally vulnerable in those spaces. But I did it because I know that your vulnerability is God's opportunity to shine. When you're vulnerable and you rely totally on God and you've got no one else to rely or depend on, God is the one. God is the one that will bring you through it. With two minutes to go, gentlemen, I was working with a young person who uh, wanted to take their life. We were counseling that young person, showed her a way to get through that, and she got through it. But the only reason that she got through it, the only reason that she believed the message was that she believed the messenger. Men, your message has to be a strong one. It has to be moving from comfort to courage. You have to be able to get into a space where you can translate your passion into performance around what God wants in your life. I want to say to you today that the message that you give your people in respect to who you are as a Christian, no matter where you are in your life, Yeah. When Jesus was in the garden, when Jesus went to the cross, he didn't have an excuse. He went. He went. When people call on you and ask you to do something for them because you know it's the godly thing to do, no excuses. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. I believe Jesus came to heal, fill, and employ. Godspeed, gentlemen.